Dear students, welcome to the course on Computer Aided Design and Manufacturing. In this lecture, I am going to discuss introduction of Computer Aided Design and Manufacturing or CAD CAM. Let us first discuss what is CAD CAM. CAD CAM is basically the term used for computer aided design and manufacturing. We typically make use of lot of computer hardware and software to do variety of things. The main activities in this computer aided design and manufacturing are related to design and manufacturing functions or assistance of various design and manufacturing functions with the help of computer hardware and software is done in this. We make use of variety of concepts that we will be learning in this course, methods, technologies and tools. Let us first discuss how the things related to computer aided design evolved in the recent history. The development of Sutherland's sketch pad in 1963 is considered to be a landmark development in the history of computer aided design. Sutherland's PhD thesis at MIT's Lincoln Laboratory led to the development of this Sutherland's sketchpad or sketchpad is uh, at that time it was also called a sketchpad. The thesis of his PhD thesis was sketchpad a man machine graphical communication system. What kind of capabilities this sketchpad had at that point of time? It could store data related to geometric entities. The data of geometric entities can be manipulated for modifying those entities. For example, the line, if you want to modify the line means you want to extend that line, you want to trim that line and all these operations that you want to do could be done. Or you could also use this geometric information of entities to draw other entities. For example, I draw a line and you want to use the end point of this line for drawing another circle. So you can access that information of the line through the computer uh, to draw a new uh, uh, to draw a new entity. So this kind of capabilities you already see in the software that you use today any of the CAD software whether whether it is AutoCAD or uh, uh, some CAD modeling softwares like SolidWorks and all that. So these capabilities you are always uh, you are very well aware of but how the things evolved in the uh, history when these things got developed is important to know. So as you can see in the adjoining figure, the geometric data reception was done interactively through the user interaction, for example, use of light pen. And this information of geometric data could be accessed uh, with the help of computers. That means the computer, uh, the data was compatible with the computer system. The data could be used for displaying the geometric entities on the screen. The data could be reused or it could be um, used for uh, uh, modifying the geometric entity or variety of other manipulations, for example, rotation or translation, etc. I would encourage all of you to watch this video on this very interesting development that happened in 1963. Uh, the video is available on YouTube uh, freely. So uh, I encourage all of you to see this 15-20 minutes video in your spare time. Let us now discuss the general design process. The idea of discussing the general design process here is because we are going to use computer aided design in variety of the design uh, 
design steps. So typically the general design process in this slide which is being shown is a reference from Shigley's book and you can see that it has six major steps. So these steps are starting from recognition of need and up to the presentation. So recognition of the need is uh, when we identify that there is need to design a product to solve a particular existing problem or it may be referred to in other terms as a for example proposing a policy so that is these things are uh, started with recognition of need for example i ask you to design a chair the immediate question you will be asking me is what kind of chair what is the purpose of designing a chair or how you are going to use that chair or what is the need of designing a chair okay so these things naturally come to somebody's mind and whether you want a chair for your study purpose for your office for your drawing room for your bedroom and all that etc etc so recognition of need is identity uh, is uh, related to the the uh, the requirement basically what is the requirement or the broad broader uh, framework under which uh, you need to have something some product to be developed or manufactured the second thing which comes after the recognition of need is the definition of the problem so what is done in this step is to frame raw specifications or parameters and functional characteristics without further detailing or without much detailing of the product for example the problem may be defined as to design a chair for study purpose for a person of uh, age say 16 years to 50 years or whatever and the cost limitations can also be provided the cost of the chair should be um, not more than say 1500 and etc etc so all these things will be called as a definition of the problem so definition of the problem is basically the statement which is which can be understood which can be shared with the team so that the things are more clear the third step which is again a very important step is the synthesis step in this step you apply your artistic skills scientific knowledge technical knowledge knowledge about the tools materials etc to create design alternatives with functional module so that they address to the 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 defined problem so uh, in this step basically you are going to work on multiple alternatives like using combination of materials for example uh, again taking the example of this chair you may uh, you may refer to plastic materials you may uh, refer to wood wood material or steel aluminium etc to to come out with some plans or uh, uh, designs which are naturally different because they are using different materials and their designs will also be different in the analysis stage the designs which are synthesized they are analyzed for variety of things such as checking the strength if you are uh, uh, designing something which is having thermal uh, implications for example air conditioner or a refrigerator you are going to do thermal or heat transfer analysis and cost so all these analyses are done in this uh, analysis step. <coughs> then the next step is a evaluation step. In the evaluation step, the design is based on their, uh, the evaluation of the designs is done based on the analysis as well as the performance related to desired functions so that a best alternative or the optimal one can be selected or shortlisted okay so 
uh, in this for example uh, the opinion of the marketing people or the sales people can be evaluated uh, some uh, customers they uh, the uh, the design can be shared with uh, some customers for their critical uh, opinions and all that and finally in the presentation stage the design is presented with the help of its CAD model with the help of a working prototype or the designs so remember that all these activities are iterative in nature and you may always refer back to the previous step so that is why these are shown with the help of a double sided arrows so that means uh, it is always there is a feedback from uh, from the later stages or later steps to the initial steps or the earlier steps uh, let us now discuss the manufacturing. So, manufacturing again will be discussing three, uh, six steps. Uh, this starts with identification of the features. For example, I give you something, some drawing. You try to understand that drawing and you try to find out what kind of features are contained in this part or product from manufacturing point of view. For example, a circle in a drawing sheet may refer to the a hole and a hole which you recognize because of the knowledge that you have of uh, understanding drawings you can correlate that with the drilling process so this kind of uh, identification of features is done and based on the identification of features you will prepare a process plan what is a process plan it is also called as a bridge between design and manufacturing and uh, uh, the process plan it typically consists of uh, the list of manufacturing operations as well as their sequence along uh, sequence in which they will be done along with tools machines and machining parameters like what kind of speed feed and depth of cut you would be giving then this is followed by the manufacturing which is the third step you do the manufacturing in a particular machine setup and all that uh, after manufacturing you get the part or the product and you go for assembly maybe you procure some of the the product is having 10 parts for example you manufacture two in parts in house and eight of the other parts they are coming from outside so all these parts are assembled the assembled parts are completed to develop a product to get desired functionality and desired design specifications. Then this is followed by inspection and testing. So after the part is, uh, in fact inspection and uh, testing will go after the manufacturing also but here it is uh, specifically mentioned that the product is going to be inspected so that it is to be tested uh, or it is to be assessed that whether it is major uh, whether it is going to fulfill our requirements or not or desired of uh, design requirements are fulfilled and after this is done the dispatch is uh, made the manufactured part of product is dispatched for transportation and end of use let us briefly discuss the process planning which we discussed in the previous uh, slide uh, briefly which is also called the bridge between design and manufacturing so what is the process planning it is a the function in manufacturing that establishes which processes and parameters are to be used as well as machines performing these processes uh, following steps are to be used in process planning first is study overall shape of the part uh, for example, I gave you an example of um, uh, a drawing which is shared with you and you will you will try to understand those this drawing to understand its design features. From design feature you are going to correlate it with the manufacturing features and based on that you will determine the best raw material, uh, what kind of stock is required, identify the datum surfaces, then identify the part features datum surfaces are like reference surfaces with which you are going to locate the part on the machine 
then identify the part features which is in fact you may have done the first step also and correlate uh, those uh, part features for example there are multiple holes to be done so you feel that these holes can be machined in a single setup so you have to group the part features based on the required setups so that the number of setups can be minimized then this is followed by determination of the sequence of operations selection of tools for each operation and selection of design or selection uh, select or design fixture for example in lathe you are going to fix the lathe in the chuck which is a fixture or in a milling machine you need some other kind of a fixture for locating that job because locating and fixing the job for machining or doing some operation is very important so all these things you are going to do and finally you are going to take check the plan again to find any deficiencies if any and improve that this is the example of a process plan like i give you this job you have a whole lot of uh, uh, operations to be done based on this uh, information you come to know that a lot of operations are need to be done this typically means threading this means plane turning here you have uh, again uh, uh, turning operation and uh, you have some step over here here you need to do grooving and uh, this is the radial machining etc so for each of these manufacturing operations you need a different kind of a tool you need a threading tool here you need a right hand facing tool here you need a broad face and nose uh, finishing tool here for finishing then left hand facing tool grooving or cut off tool or uh, left hand uh, turning tool then you have right hand turning tool and round nose turning tool so variety of tools available for doing different operations okay so here we will discuss the different approaches design approaches because we discuss six steps of the design process uh, design approaches are basically divided into broadly divided into two categories one is a sequential approach and another is a concurrent approach as the name appears uh, the sequential in the sequential approach you are going to you you are going to take the second step only after the first step has been completed like uh, for uh, uh, you are designing something and then you send that to the manufacturing people for getting the opinion and they are going to send the design back to you with some comments and observations for you to make changes in the design and manufacturing after that again it goes to manufacturing then assembly and uh, transportation maintenance etc so all these people are involved in the design of uh, designing anything uh, for example uh, you are uh, designing a car you need to understand the car need to be transported it is being manufactured in gurgaon you need to transport it to chennai how to transport it it should not be damaged in between how to maintain it because it is going to be maintained in somewhere in a workshop and uh, chennai for example so it should be easy to maintain it should be easy to assemble somebody is assembling the engine in the car itself so the person who is assembling the engine in the car should feel it very easy to assemble rather than uh, and uh, for that matter manufacturing people also so suppose you are uh, designing something which is perfect very well evaluated by you okay but the manufacturing when you send the, your design to manufacturing person the uh, person comes up with a lot of observations that this is going to cost very high because you have given very tight tolerances the quality expectation of your design is very high so this is called going to cost very high so there is a need to change the design so that the cost can be reduced okay so all these things are basically the iterations that happen between the design department and other departments 
and if they are done sequentially like one after the other there is lot of time which is uh, wasted uh, because of the iterations so this we also call it as over the wall design approach okay you are going to uh, uh, from the marketing people they are sending information to design design people sending to manufacturing assembly and service and the iterations the information comes back so this is also called uh, called as over the wall design approach over the wall design approach means i have done my job now it is your duty you do your job none of my business so that means lot of infighting between the departments lot of blame game etc whatever i have done is very good whatever now it is your duty to do your best if you are not if you are uh, telling me that the manufacturing cost is going to be high this is your job to reduce the cost not mine but this kind of uh, tussles between different departments that we see in uh, other aspects of life also is very painful and uh, particularly for industries which are uh, there for uh, uh, serving for development of products and all that it increases the lead time as well as the cost ultimately affecting adversely affecting the performance of the industry on the other hand the concurrent approach as the name appears all stakeholders have real time interaction whether it is the people from production manufacturing design assembly materials structure all these thing, uh, people they sit together or either physically or with the help of the tools available and they share the information in the real time feedback is shared by the departments concurrently with assignments uh, uh, given to different departments and you see the result which are quite evident and proven from research Uh, the first, uh, the upper figure uh, representing the sequential, uh, sequential uh, processes engineering, and the second one, concurrent or also called as simultaneous engineering. So you see, because of the interfacing, uh, there is a lot of time saving, there is a lot of cost saving, and the lead time from design to production is less in concurrent engineering. and now it is let me add uh, there are concurrent engineering tools which are available which we also call as uh, later we will discuss in the product life cycle management in a separate lecture thank you